In this quick After Effects video, we're gonna to put together this really awesome content grid that you can obviously use for photos, videos, or anything that you need to show a collage of elements. And specifically, we're focused on creating a grid that can be used for any size and is incredibly replicatable. So you can be able to put together a full, you know, one, two, three minute video within an hour. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. The reason why we're doing this tutorial today is because I actually used the techniques in this video to put together, you know, a 30 second promo within just a few minutes. So if you're ready to create something awesome, drop a like on this video and let's get started. All right, here we are inside of After Effects. You can download the project file for free if you wish to use this as a template or just break it down. So the first thing we need to determine for this video is how big we want our grid to be. So I'm doing four by four, but you can do three by three, five by five, and so on. It just depends on what you want to do. So here we are in our tutorial composition. First thing we need to do is a little bit of math. So we'll come here to composition settings and we have a width and height of 1920 by 1080. And since I want to do four by four, I'll take 1920 and divide it by four. If you're doing a three by three, divide it by three. So I know the width is gonna be 480 and the height is gonna be 270, right? So we need to keep this in mind because we wanna build this out quickly and as efficiently as possible. So we'll take those two numbers that we just had. We'll come here to layer new solid and we'll create a width of 480 and a height of 270. So you apply your math right there and click OK. So the first thing we wanna do is hit A on our keyboard for anchor point, set the anchor point X and Y value to zero, and then hit P on your keyboard for position, and we'll set the position to zero on both values as well. Uh, but real quick, we'll come here to position, right click it and click on separate dimensions. This will come handy in a few seconds. So our goal here is to use this solid to just lay out the design of our you know, photo or video grid here. So once this is set up, we'll take our solid layer, go to edit, duplicate. We can bring up position by hitting P on keyboard and we'll come here to the X position and just add 480 in there. And this will perfectly slide it over. We'll go ahead and duplicate again. We'll do 480 plus 480, which is 960. We'll duplicate one more time and we'll add another 480, which is gonna be uh, 1440. So everything is perfectly spaced out and then we just gotta do the Y value. So we'll take all these layers, duplicate them, bring them up in our timeline. Hit P on keyboard for position and we'll add 270 to the Y position. And this is why we separated the values. Duplicate again, bring up P on keyboard for position, do 270 plus 270, which equals 540. And we'll do one final duplicate because we're doing four by four. And we'll add the final 270 to the Y value and that puts us at 810. So now we have this perfectly set up four by four grid across our composition, which you really can't see as a grid just yet. So let's actually go ahead and create the grid right away. And then you'll see how fast this process is for duplicating and adding in as many images or video as you want. So to create the grid, we'll come here to layer, new, solid. We'll call it grid, click OK. We'll come here to effect, generate, and we'll grab the grid effect. We'll apply some very simple math to make this look great. We'll come here to anchor, set it to zero, and the Y to zero as well. Then we'll come here to corner and we'll set our math that we did. So it'd be 480 uh, by 270. And this will create the perfect grid setup. For those of you that don't want to have the lines going around your composition, just to fix that, you can come here to the anchor and just slightly move these to the negative values by four to five points. And now we'll remove it from your composition. And once we're happy with this, we're ready to start putting in images. So before we place in our first image, we need to talk about the sizes of the images video that you're gonna insert into your grid. So for example, all my elements here are the same resolution. They're 360 by 202, weird resolution. But for those of you working with photos or an array of different types of media, so, so for example, if you're working with photos, you know, every photo might be a different size. So we need to address that right away before we place down a single image. What we want to do is take all of our solids here, except for the grid, we'll duplicate them. We'll toggle switch to modes until we see the shy icon. We'll make sure that the shy icon is enabled. It looks like this. And then we'll click on this hide all layers icon right there. We'll select everything that remains. Toggle switch to modes again and set the track mat to alpha mats. So everything should look like this and you can keep everything hidden so we can make sense of this. So now to swap in your images, it's very easy to do this. What we can do is select the image, video, whatever is inside the composition here. Make sure the layer is selected in the timeline as well so you see how both are selected. You select the image in the project panel, hold down Alt on your keyboard and just drag it anywhere in here and this will automatically replace that solid with the image. You may need to come here and hit S on keyboard for scale and just scale this down to fit perfectly. And there you have it. So very simple. You can also reposition by hitting P on keyboard for position. So then if you're working with different sizes, for example, we come here, swap out the next one. You can scale this down. So even though the image is bigger uh, than the actual solid that we have here, since this is set to an alpha mat, it'll only say within the single block. 
So then you have the ability to easily reposition and scale it to fit perfectly. So we can go ahead and just repeat this process for every single layer here until we fill up our entire grid. But before we move on, if you're looking to save time while producing awesome work, we have over 15,000 templates for you to use in After Effects and Premiere Pro. With the Motion Duck extension, you can preview, apply, and modify any of the templates within a few clicks. Be sure to check our links in the description below to take a look at all the template packs that we have. And of course, you can download our free After Effects and Premiere Pro packs as well. Those links are in the description below. All right, so now that all of our media is within our grid setup, we only have a few more things left to do here. One, we'll apply some overall animation to this to give it movement. You can add a title. Uh, and then ultimately, if you wish to create a hundred of these, you can easily duplicate this and be done in a very reasonable amount of time. So first things first, we'll add some animation to this. So we'll come here to layer, new null object. We'll rename it to zoom and we'll unhide our layers by clicking this icon and we'll go ahead and select everything and make sure that the zoom null object is deselected. Just hold down control and click it and then grab the pick whip and parent everything to that null zoom layer. And then we can hide it all again. Come here to our zoom layer and we'll hit S on keyboard for scale. We'll add a keyframe, move this forward in time, maybe by a half a second. And we'll come here and scale into our uh, work here. And simply we can grab both keyframes, hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy ease. Go to the graph editor. We'll come here to the value graph and we'll grab both of our keyframes. You'll see our handles. Just drag both these handles out to the edges here. So now we'll have this very beautiful zoom within our composition and it looks really nice. And one thing you should do is make sure motion blur is turned on for all your layers. Make sure it's turned on right here as well. Now I actually want to go ahead and create a title in this composition. For those of you that don't care about a title and you want to duplicate this into, you know, a million different slides, go ahead and just skip this section in the video and I'll see you in a second. But for those of you that want to create a quick title, here's how we're going to do it. We're coming at the top, we'll grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw out a rectangle like this. All right, we'll make sure it's centered in our composition and then we'll simply hit S on keyboard for scale. Come here at the beginning of our timeline, break the chain for scale, add a keyframe for scale, move it forward in time, set the X scale to 0%. We'll go ahead, select these keyframes, hit F9 on keyboard. Feel free to graph edit those as well. And then we'll grab our textile tool. We'll type out our text here in the center. Once your text is typed out, we'll open up our layer, come here to animate, add a position here. We'll bring down the Y value, maybe below our rectangle. And then we'll come in a range selector one. We'll add a keyframe for start, move forward in time, maybe by a second, maybe less than a second, it doesn't matter. Set up to 100%. Feel free to make them easy ease by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And one thing you'll notice if we come here, the title is below the box. So to quickly fix this, we'll grab our shape layer or rectangle, duplicate it, bring it above our title layer, toggle switch the modes, set the track map of your title to alpha map. And my title comp was already set to alpha map and that's because I like to jump around behind the scenes but make sure to set the alpha map. And then the most important part, make sure that all your title elements here are parented to that zoom layer and turn on motion blur. And now for title in here, here's what we have. And now we can move on to quickly duplicating this and building a master sequence. So we'll make sure everything's selected. Just hit control A to select everything, go to layer, pre-compose. We'll call it grid one, click okay. And maybe we only want this up for maybe a second and a half. So what we'll do is we'll just drag in the out point of this layer. So then we know where everything's at. So then simply what we can do is come here to our project panel. We can find this grid of one composition, duplicate it. And now you have grid two. We can bring it into our timeline and then we can just move this over. So right now we'll have our first grid and then we'll have our second grid. It's the same exact thing, but then it's up to you to go into this composition and swap in the images with something new. So for example, I can come here and I can start bringing in my own images and swap everything out. You may need to rescale everything and position, but that's up to you. And now we've swapped everything out and now we go back to our main composition. And here's what we have between the two compositions, two completely unique uh, grids here. And you can continue this process and duplicate out a thousand of them. Now, one thing we need to talk about is the transition between the two. Having a transition makes a massive difference. So for example, I pulled this transition that's being used right here from our seamless transitions pack for After Effects and Premiere Pro. However, I'm going to link another tutorial that we've done where we've shown how to create transitions like this here in After Effects. So you can kind of pick and choose what transition you want to manually create. But for those of you that would like to have a transitions pack for Premiere Pro and After Effects, I'll go ahead and link this pack from us in the description below. All right, so now you can create a really cool and quick grid effect here inside of After Effects. Of course, you can download our free After Effects and Premiere Pro templates that comes with our Motion Duck extension where you can preview all these templates for absolutely free. Those links are below and always 
be creating.